So I initially recorded a review of the Vulp Pro, and I wanted to redo it because honestly, I don't think I was very coherent. I also now have a Vulp to compare it to, an original Vulp. I had one, I sold it, and then I got this one for free. As you notice, this blade is silver, and normally a red handle Vulp has a black blade. So this blade, this Vulp actually has like really awful tolerances but i will say that uh that's not necessarily characteristic of all of them but some people do find that their vaults change um so the vault pro is a bow song the next bow song designed by will hirsch in collaboration with nabalis it is a upgrade of the original vault you can see a couple of differences for one g10 inlays very much inspired by the cygnus albeit the opposite in the design. I'll get to that later. You can also see that down here you have screws to keep the G10 in here, but it also adds weight compared to just these diamonds. Um, the bottle opener is a little different and the cutouts are a little different and also where the tip is because this tip is now aligned with the middle of the pivot and this tip used to be a little further back. He actually has a whole video where he talks about all the differences. Um, another major difference is that this is 6061 aluminum and this is 7075 aluminum. So it's a better quality in addition to also having G10. Um, this one is like oh so slightly heavier. My scale said that um, the original vault was like 3.92. The website says 3.88 and uh, the vault pro, the website says it's 3.92. Mine came out to like 3.99 or so. So you know it's like a, a difference possibly of like 0 0.04 or 5 ish um is there a difference in the blade seal the original vulp is 420 heat treated and this vulp uh the vulp pro is 440 c so the blade seal is also better and the bead blast finish is like different i guess um but those are all the major differences um, and if you see the hardware here is black, it's because it's normally a black blade. And then I guess uh, my friend Eric straight up didn't realize that someone cannibalized the black blade and put it on handles that they wanted. Um, and so while I did try and crank this, uh, it could just be the washers are on wrong or they're just pressed. Um, but it's got tap on both sides. So some people have had tap develop on the original Vulps. The original Vulp is $65 at retail MSRP. And the Vulp Pro is about $140, just under like three, $139.99 or some shit like that. And that has been a major point of contention for a lot of reasons. However, those reasons are all wrong. Let me get, let me, let me back up. So on the surface, you say, is this Vulp worth twice as much as this Vulp? This one being $65, this one being $140, that's more than twice the amount. But frankly, they're looking at it wrong. It's honestly a straight up miracle how this even got to be that inexpensive. I don't frankly understand how they managed to make the original Vulp so cheap and be an honestly quality enough product. I also now haven't had a Vulp in my hands for a while. And so flipping the Vulp, it's actually better flipper than I remember it being. Um, the Chaplains are honestly better than I remember it being, but still not like great. The jumping's still good. Um, this is, uh, like, honestly, I don't see myself selling this. It's got such shit tolerances. Like, I might do a giveaway. Um, but frankly, the Vulp is a really good beater. If you're willing to lose cosmetic integrity, I find that it's a good beater. Um, and also, it's a bottle opener, so it's got utility. I think I stand by the Vulp being a really, really good beginner battle song. Albeit, I also still stand by that. It's chaplains and ability to chaplain. It doesn't really grow with you. Um, I did compare earlier the the new Carlo that I got, and its chaplains are honestly about equivalent to the original Vulp, albeit obviously slightly different due to the dimensions and the weight and the, the length. Um, first things first, the obvious differences in terms of the price, the G10, this machining, is not straightforward. You don't just get to do flat machining. You have to grow you have to make these grooves, which is part of why this was such a unique and original design. 
this alone is already a big jump in in price just to machine the volt pro is also the only battle song to have g10 on the sides you have a little bit of three point groove here and that is um that's new nothing else has that to my knowledge uh there's also a speed channel as far as i can tell the jimping is basically the same um but yeah the speed channel and the the machining to get the side and the faces of this aluminum to then have a custom fit uh i mean it's it's all machine made but you, you still have to make this specific design in order to get this g10 like to fit uh the qc of that i'm not sure uh both the vault and the vault pro have to be milled and then anodized and then milled again the dual tone whenever you have a dual tone means that you have to have a second round of milling um or yeah because then you get the different colors so uh that i guess i mean that's just a, how they make the cost in general um but it's it's the same of both the another big difference of course is the quality of material is that the the aluminum is just more expensive this is 70 75 aluminum it's it's more durable it's i think slightly heavier it's just the blade also is a higher quality so they're just more expensive materials and of course the g10 you're now not just dealing with two materials and hardware you're now dealing with a third material so there's more to manufacture and people be like oh but it's chinese you should be able to get the cost down it's still crazy the fact that they got this to 65 dollars and the fact that the orion 1.5 is 75 bucks that's bonkers and you can't do that unless you have you know a an established connection i'm like if you're going to complain about the price get your own fucking connections make your own connections in china and manufacturing deals and raw materials and a separate production for g10 and then the installation if you crack g10 it's ruined so like there's just more that can go wrong it's just a more expensive product and you can't get around that and to compare to that you have the nimali's trident which is also retailing for 140 it was on sale it's like now on sale to, for like much less but like these two are siblings they're made by the same company no one batted an eye at this being 140 because it was being compared to the squid nautilus the squid nautilus being to my knowledge the first aluminum bow song with g10 scales on the flats the squid nautilus retails for like 220 dollars when that was new you know that, like squid does a lot of products that are honestly kind of trailblazers lucas is willing to experiment and make lots of weird things he's made the swordfish which no one else is really tempted to do an all aluminum bow song with a sandwich design like that's possibly the only one that doesn't really have like a sort of like direct competitor whereas like the squiddy other plastic bow songs happened and the kraken of course a bunch of the channel aluminum and the tsunami was the first balance on to like titanium grail that was like at 4.0 people were like that's too light now it's really common to have balance songs under four ounces and, and also like titanium balance songs under four ounces so with the nautilus being uh at 220 that was just what it costed before and then people got this price down so the trident the nabali's trident is like 140 the marcolo g10 comet i want to say is like 80 i think it's under 100 bucks now some people might consider these inferior products i will always i am an apologist for the nabali's trident i really enjoy this battle song some people just prefer the nautilus much more on the second hand market the nautilus is also a lot less but that doesn't change the fact that the msrp is 220. so when you compare you go wow this is such a good price but comparatively, when you see this and you're comparing it to this being 65 bucks, your brain, there's like a whole thing about like how like the opposite direction. Like if you're going to more expensive, you, your brain goes, oh, my God, that's so much worse than when things get cheaper. So it's just honestly, a lot of people are they're just comparing it to the original vault. But if you're looking at it, objectively speaking, this is a very good priced ballast song. There are other ballast songs that have uh, G10 
And there are other ballast songs that are 70, 75 aluminum. The Prisma Pro is 70, 75 aluminum. It doesn't have G10. That's like 180. It's a live, like 180 or 160, I think, possibly for a trainer. That's still more than this. The the BB Barfly is, uh, sorry, the, the Barracuda, that's like about 120. That's like it's like 120 to 140 based off of whether you're getting it from etsy or on sale or from the website it's kind of hard they're a little inconsistent with their price um or when it's on sale but it's basically the barracuda is basically the same price as the volt pro and no one says that the barracuda is like overpriced if anything barfly products are typically on the more inexpensive side one like 40 120 ish for an aluminum channel ballast song of a high enough quality that people like it it's pretty it's good it's it's not necessarily competitive that's very arbitrary but it's a well-made good tolerance well-designed well-machined product for 140 to 120 that's fine so people giving flag to the vault pro you're out of your mind or mostly you're just looking at the wrong reference points so if you're like eh, you're still wrong now let's talk more about the actual product the G10 is probably the most noticeable difference. We're going to compare it to the Cygnus. Of course, Will Hirsch, being uh, you know a normal human being who does not plagiarize, was very much like saying, yes, I was very much influenced by the Cygnus. However, I want to change some things. Now, if you notice, the Cygnus and the, and the Vault Pro are kind of backwards in terms of their G10. On the Cygnus, it might be hard to see. I'm sorry about this pattern, but I'm a freak, and I was like, that's cool looking. Anyways, you can see that it's got some up here, thins out, is a circle in the center. Normally, these are just cutouts, but I have inserts because it's nice for grip. And it thins out again down here. On the Vault Pro, it's a big circle up on the top, and then just a thin line all the way down. So this is kind of just like a donut with two lines, and the donut on this one is just all the way up here. We're also going to eventually talk about this part of the G10, but I'll get to that later. So, the Cygnus is titanium, and the G10 is designed so that you have grip throughout the face of the battle song, but this section here is supposed to be smooth enough so that you have the fluidity to do whatever you want to do on rollovers, chaplains, like whatever. It's just... Um, you know, it's designed because, like, titanium is a grippier metal than aluminum, but you still, like, they're like, oh, we want you to be able to have the sort of grip and control uh, on, from G10, but still having the slickness and fluidity on titanium and other surfaces. I don't really know why they, like, thin out down here, because um, I don't really think that, oh, yeah, I really want the slickness for when I do choker fans I, I find it to be the opposite like oh ladders i don't want slickness i want grip so that's like a different thing where i mean it looks cool but i think frankly uh for pragmatic reasons i think it would have been better if they had like more g10 down here um but hey the volt pro also doesn't have a big face cut out down here um and this being sandwich actually i have channel spacers uh but normally this is it's a sandwich knife so you just have a full sandwich thing so this is a, a faux speed channel <sighs> now let's get to this one um because this is aluminum it is designed so that you have more grip up here when you're doing tricks because aluminum is slippery now the question is is it actually effective and i'm gonna be honest i don't know i've been flipping this for a while and I've been trying to diagnose a lot of my feelings about this battle song and I've been kind of not 100% sure I find that this is nice it flips nice I think it flips better than the original vault for sure it is slightly handle bias they imply that it was more handle bias than the original vault now that I have an original vault again like maybe I don't know it's got better momentum but frankly Like, I guess a little bit. They said it was like more handle bias, but I, I flip knives that are much more handle bias than this one. It still fans quite nicely. I don't feel bad when I fan this. Shit. I'm finding that the G10, it's comfortable. It's definitely comfortable. Is it like effectively grippy in ways? I don't know. Like some of these edges are just so smooth 
that it doesn't feel actually grippier. If anything, it's slipperier than the aluminum, but that's hard to say. The actual faces are grippy, but um, yeah. And like, theoretically, this middle section here on the side is grippy. However, uh, where I would theoretically want grip the most is like on the interior. Not that you can have an entire flat surface because you know, it would just, but if it was, if it extended out here, I don't know how hard that would be to install. I think that would be more effective of grip uh, because this side out here, you're basically only doing for helixes. I am gonna, I don't know why Facebook is. So you're only really getting a difference of grip on this side out here for helixes. I mean, obviously there are other tricks that you can feel that for. If you're fanning really high up, you can get it. Um, but as for that, I, I don't know. And then you of course have G10 that lines down here. Is this effective? I would say, yeah. Yeah, I think it is more effective. I think so. But honestly, the effects of the G10 and grip, I'm gonna say somewhat inconclusive. And believe me, I have, I have tried. I have really tried to be like, Hmm, is this grippier than it would be without if it was just aluminum there? And honestly, inconclusive. Uh, one thing I do notice is that I do feel like there's possibly, it's either, I wasn't sure if it was like there's not enough tip weight or there's too much ass weight or there's not enough ass weight. I was trying to figure it out because basically I find that I'm kind of choking on a lot of my helixes. Like, so the BTAB from here to here is fine. The helix starting here is fine. And then when I get to that last part, sorry, let me start that again. When I get to the part where I have to fling this handle all the way over here, that's the most momentum that's required of the BTAB into the helix, a pretty standard combo. And I find that for some reason, there's something that's catching me up. And I, I've been trying to figure out what is up with that because the Vault Pro and my, if you've seen me, you know, with my unboxing video, um, check that video out for my initial thoughts. You see me kind of like, like struggling with it a little bit and I'm not, I'm still not sure why. I have removed the screws on the bottom, but I didn't keep them out for too long. I had no screws and no pivots. However, uh, this circle part of this G10 here can start to like fly out. And since this is not my knife, I am borrowing it from Maddox. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I don't want to fucking break his knife. So I've been trying to be somewhat careful. Now, I feel like with my own preferences, I prefer neutral balafon. And I found that while the weight is nice for certain momentum, I, I find it maybe possibly screwing me up with certain tricks that I think maybe because there isn't as much tip weight to compensate. It is a Bowie design, so there's less material up here. So with, yeah, like the, like that last part of the helix is always a little kind of fucked up. I don't know, it's weird. And I'm trying to figure it out, but still, I haven't really had a good full idea. I think it was easier when I didn't have any weights down here. I think I've preferred that. Um, however, you do need to have weights down here, or you know, you do need to have screws down here, otherwise your G10 can crack. Now, there is a nice bonus, however, because Zippy Balasong, our beloved modder of the community, um, well, I guess modder, our beloved custom inserts maker, has made inserts for the Vault Pro. Uh, so the original Vulp has inserts, but these cutouts are different. So your Vulp cutouts are not going to fit on your Vulp Pro. Um, and the cutouts change because it's better overall and it helps with more of the weight and stuff like that. It, it's like hard to tell, like just looking at it, but when you see them side to side, you can see a difference in the cutouts, especially this back spine here is much longer. This one is uh, a much lower cutout. The, the curve of the Bowie is a bit more intense. Um, the tip is a little further back on the original Vulp. Um, and so it's just a better, arguably better design, I think, from what I can tell. Uh, I also 
think that these blades are not interchangeable. Like, I don't think you can put a Vault Pro blade on a Vault. Um, it certainly seems like the pivots are much less wide on the Vault Pro compared to the original Vault, which does seem to extend out further. So, Zippy had inserts for the original Vault, which did help some people with the balance. I found that even with inserts, I couldn't find a configuration that I actually liked the Vulp enough to keep. I found myself just not really wanting to flip it, and it was just taking up space, and I traded it, well, I attempted to trade it for a Calico, and then it got lost in the mail, and so then I cashed out the insurance. Um, I finally did get a Calico, because I was like really bummed, like, man, I really want to try one. I did not see that cut, ouchie. Um, so, Zippy has made new blade inserts. However, Zippy also has two additional mods for the Vault Pro. One of which is replacing this back here, this middle G10 section with this three groove line. And theoretically it's grippy, but again, I only really have my fingers on it for, or at least, you know, where I need it for grip on at least the Helix. And I can't really think of anything else off the top of my head that I found myself being like, yeah, I really need grip up here on the back. Um, but he has a replacement to match the chevrons of the faces. It is, however, plastic, like 3D printed plastic and not G10. So it is a different material. Uh, and I think there is at least one version where instead of chevrons, it's just the zippy logo with a Z. Um, that's cool. Um, but the one that I'm most excited for, not the blade inserts, but he's got different plugs. And those affect the balance, of course. And so if I were to get my own Vault Pro, because at first I was like, if I if I'm if I love this, I would get one. I'm not. I don't love it. I like it a lot, but there's something about it that's just throwing me off a little bit. However, I think honestly the zippy plugs would change how I feel, and I feel kind of weird having my entire collection starting to be sort of in a sense samey, where everything if I'm just kind of modifying it with zippy inserts to making it more and more neutral, whatever, whatever, whatever. But also like I'm starting to be more aware of like my preferences. And so with the zippy plugs, I think that would honestly make me feel better because I find that at least with no weights, with zero weights, it feels awkward and weird. Um, what's also great about Zippy's website is the fact that he has a chart that shows you all of the different configurations of weight and how effective it is and how it feels. So it's like with the plugs, it's like more neutral and more agile. And then with the plugs and the blade insert, it's like, heavier and more momentum and so it's just like oh fuck yeah he's got the actual specs of the of the just the raw ounce changes and how it affects the balance as well as a, a little description of like ooh, do i want my balance line to be more agile maybe i do do i want more momentum like if i like the seropus that's got a lot more momentum compared to just the regular serif anyways is the vault pro worth it i would say yes it is however Something that I do find myself wishing had a few... There's still just something that just doesn't quite feel 100% right. And I and it's possibly just these ways down here. It's possibly just that I, I find that this G10 could be a little differently. It's a really cool design. It's really modern. It's very sleek. It's a great upgrade on the Vulp. That said, my biggest issue with the Vulp is just chaplains, and I still wish that they made a version of the Vulp with maybe a redesigned version of the blade. Like if they had a Vulp V2, where you have a better blade, and you could chaplain it better, and it was the same price, that is something that I would just be like, oh, super confident in recommending. Like the Orion 1.5 is the best budget battle song, being only $10 more than the MSRP of the Vulp. And if they make a Vulp version 2 that is uh, somewhat redesigned, and apparently Brandon Baker was also advocating for just redesigning the original Vulp, and he fought Will on like doing this, but then after this got done, he was like, I'm actually really glad that we did that. And I am really glad that this new battle song exists. I think this is really cool, and I think that it deserves to exist, and that people should and will absolutely check it out. Um, and a lot of people are just gonna keep in the collection forever. It's, it's a good product. I might try and fish one up in the secondhand market. Uh, especially the the red and black ones and the gold and black ones, because they have black blades and black G10. Those are really nice looking. Um, but, if they made a Vault V2 
that fixed basically the major problems of the original vault, uh, of which I don't really think any of it's in the handles. I think it's just the blade. Uh, and now that you have like these blade, you know, like you fixed a lot of this design stuff, if you can make the original vault chaplain better, that would honestly be a contender for the best budget battle song. Like 1.5 is great. All right, 1.5, excellent. And it feels different from the vault. There is space in your collection for both, and if you have a limited budget, which is totally normal, because battle songs are expensive as balls, like, this is 140, and that's expensive to a lot of people. This one, this one is fucking $650. So, balls, right? Having more inexpensive battle songs that are, like, a high quality is, is really great. And 140 for this is honestly a great price, good materials, good product very sleek very neat very functional and um i just wish that they also bring some of the modernized versions of this to this product because this is still the original vault is still a really good beginner battle song and i want people to be able to own one like if if people were to just own one battle song a lot of people don't understand why i collect so many they're like aren't they all the same and like on a surface level yes but like some people are only just going to own one battle song. And if you want a non-live blade that also has a function such as a bottle opener, I think the Vulp is probably one of your best bets because it comes with everything you need. It has a function, 1.5. You can get a live blade version for 85 or you can get a trainer that has no function for 75. I have a trainer and it's like, it flips great. I've come to terms with the fact that I love flipping battle songs and collecting them, but at first, I wanted function only. I wanted to have a battle song that was not a live blade, because, you know, I didn't want to get myself cut and learning all these tricks. Um, and so I originally got a Mako, and then I got a Vulp, and then I got a Barracuda, and I didn't get a live blade for a long time, because I wasn't planning on it. I didn't want one for a while. So, basically, this boils down to Dear Will and Brandon, uh, please make a Vulp V2 that is akin to the price of the Vulp V1, but with the updates of the Vulp Pro, um, you know, this G10 shit, this is all cool and stuff like that, but if you just update the blade, you don't need to update the blade materials, just the shape, and if it can, if that hopefully affects the chaplains to make them better, that will honestly be one of the best battle songs to exist, simply by just how much, just the, the difference of how well it flips would just be really nice. Anyways, that's a bit of a long-winded tangent. Um, all in all, if you own a Vulp, do you need a Vulp Pro? I mean, they flip similarly, but different. The Vulp Pro is its definitely better. I do find that the original Vulp flipping it, it's better than I remember it, but the Vulp Pro is it's just a better Bala song. I think that it's worth owning. I think that if you are the kind of person who can just spring for a $140 ballot song, this is certainly a good one. I like this shit. I like this more than the Prisma V1. Um, I think it is on par, if not better, than the Barracuda. I think it's certainly better than the Triton and the Mako. Um, the Squid Trainer V4 on bushings is... Uh, $170, so that's a $30 difference for a bow song that I think I think the Vault Pro flips better than the Squid Trainer V4, but it, You know, it's a different flipping experience. The V4 Squid Trainer is much heavier. That's like four point Whatever, I don't know. It, it's it's hefty and other Channel aluminum bow songs I'm not sure but like if you add G10 into the mix You're either gonna get the the Trident which is a fellow Nabali's battle song the Marcolo G10 Comet, which is a much more inexpensive battle song that I just think is, it, it's fine. Um, and like the Nautilus, and that's that's much more expensive. And you know, there are other G10 aluminum battle songs that I can't think of, but I don't know. A lot of people, the biggest thing I think is the critical reception is people knocking on the price and they're looking at the wrong thing and they're totally wrong because the price is fine. There are other things that I think are I'm a little critical of. I'd like to think I'm a fair critique. Um, but yeah, Vault Pro, all in all, it's pretty good. A little bit of weirdness here and there that I feel, but frankly speaking, 
I think this is a really good knife and I think that you can own one without having to worry about it being a quality. And if it's not quite up to your preferences, get some zippy inserts and uh, plugs down here and you will be really happy. I find that zippy products are always worth it. Anyways, this has been a much longer one, but I've had a lot to say about the Volt Pro and I feel much better about this video compared to the first one because it was way ramblier and way less coherent. Um, so if you found this video rambly, I'm sorry, but I feel like at least all of it was on topic. Um, but like this video, uh, check out the unboxing video where I have my first impressions. Uh, and yeah, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, thank you for everyone who supported me. And uh, thank you to Maddox uh, for lending me this Vault Pro. It is really, really nice to have one without having to sink money into one and then being like, mm. but yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching all the way through. Have a good one.